Hello, my name is Jane Jackson Feller and I have the privilege of being on staff here at Bible Center. I have the opportunity to do a lot of different things within my job, but my main duty is being the executive assistant to our senior pastor and our executive pastor, John King. I truly enjoy what I do and I'm grateful that God allows me to be a part of ministry. This week I have been studying Mark the chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. Most likely you're going to be familiar with this story. It's where Jesus heals the paralyzed man. At this time it's still very early in Jesus' ministry, but he makes for certain he is God. It's my joy to share it with you now, and I hope it touches your heart as much as it has mine. Several days earlier, Jesus had returned to Capernaum, and the news had spread very quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors, there was no more room, not even outside the door. While he was preaching the word of God, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring the man to Jesus because of the crowd. So the four men, they dig a hole in the roof right above Jesus' head. The four friends lowered the man on the mat down to the front of Jesus. Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of the religious law were close by and thought to themselves, What is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Immediately, Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked the teachers, Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven? Or stand up? Pick up your mat and walk. So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Jesus then turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped, and he grabbed his mat, and he walked out through the stunned crowd of people. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, We've never seen anything like this before. So can you imagine what the scene was. It was jaw-dropping, I'm sure. Just like that, the paralyzed man's life was changed forever. He came into the room a very sick man, and in an instant he was healed. He was made new. Truly amazing. But what struck me the most in this story was the man's paralyzed, the paralyzed man's four awesome friends. I admire their extraordinary care and concern for their paralytic friend. They knew they had to find a way to help their sick friend. They knew the man desperately needed Jesus. I admire their determination to keep going, to do their very best when obstacles got in their way. These men were not going to let an overcrowded house stop them. And then I admire their strong faith in Jesus. They knew Jesus was the only one that could heal their sick friend, not just physically, but spiritually. And so they acted. The four friends became innovative very quickly. They came up with the idea to carry their paralyzed friend as he laid on the mat up on the roof. Once on the rooftop, these four friends had to remove the roof by digging a hole through a mixture of straw and mud. This was no easy task. Then they carefully lowered their sick friend not just to any spot in the room, but to the front of Jesus. Because of their faith, the four friends knew Jesus was the healer of all, and they knew Jesus would act. Recall in verse 5 what Jesus says. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. I know the Bible is full of many amazing stories of God's saving grace, but this chapter in the Gospel of Mark is simply a beautiful story of God's love and compassion, perfectly blended with sovereignty and power. It leaves us with no doubt that Jesus is King. So this made me stop and ask myself, am I that kind of friend? Would I go beyond my comfort zone to help a friend in need? How many times have I been oblivious and overlooked the opportunity to help a struggling friend or taken a moment to make a new friend? How many times have I been so preoccupied with my own agenda, for instance this week, being consumed by the swirling news and media reports surrounding the coronavirus? that I haven't even taken time to encourage anybody, yet alone a dear friend. To me, this story is so life-giving by what Jesus did. He's showing us it is by His grace 
we are forgiven of our sins. And he's reminding us he is sovereign, always in control, and he deeply cares for his children. In life, there will always be all sorts of obstacles that will stand in our way. But that is no reason for us to become preoccupied, discouraged, or paralyzed by fear that we miss our God-given opportunities to love others as Jesus does. Take a moment today, go back and read Mark 2, verses 1 through 12, and soak in Jesus' words. Draw near to him and know because of who he is, we can live in peace in the reality that we are limited human beings and Jesus is our only hope for our doubts, our fears, anxieties, and for the neglectful ways we relate to others. We too can take up our mat, walk in faith, knowing that Jesus is our only Savior and our best friend. And pray, ask Jesus to show you a way you could care for a friend, a neighbor, or a loved one. Yes, even in the midst of a pandemic, when social distancing has become our norm, God hears our prayers. He cares for us personally, and He intervenes in our lives ways beyond anything we could ever imagine. Thankfully, we have the ability to call or text or even FaceTime a friend just to say, hey, I'm thinking about you. Drop them a note in the mail just to let them know you care. Or actually go, go and check on them while staying distant, socially distanced, of course. And simply just leave them a little something on their doorstep if you don't want to face them face to face, just to let them know that they're a blessing in your life. And most importantly, let's pray for them. Just like the four friends became creative in getting their paralyzed friend to Jesus, we can too. Trust him. Take the time to be that kind of friend, sharing the hope of Jesus. Thank you.